Welcome to the Data Mining Excel Pivots tutorial. As a business professional, your success highly depends on your ability to manage information, see great opportunities and or weaknesses where others cannot, and also to recognize the importance of data to information. Now imagine data as being any words or numbers that you can gather, uh, and in this case gather means store on a computer, Excel spreadsheet, Word document, or database. If you add layers of meaning to that piece of data, then you turn it into information. Information is what we can actually use. This actually holds the value of an opportunity or the value of a threat identified early on. Now imagine a large mountain and inside that mountain you know that there's a few billion dollars worth of gold. You have two options. One is you can blow up the mountain and of course very little of it will be left the bad part is you're gonna get some of your gold uh, which will be contaminated and you risk missing of course a lot of valuable resource option B would be to strategically find out and know that there is gold where it is uh, and take out only what you need so you leave the mountain intact uh, for future generations to enjoy and possibly more resources but you get exactly what you want which is all the gold at that moment now instead of gold, imagine the, the mountain as being a big pile of words and numbers or data and at this moment to make a critical decision either to avoid a problem or create new value for your company, uh, you want to get only the gold, the data that you need at this moment and you want all of it and you don't want to miss any of it. That of course would be called data mining and we're going to learn how to strategically get all the data that you need fast, accurately, with consistency using pivot tables. Pivot tables themselves are quite simple. There are about eight or nine different things that you can do. It all depends on how you appreciate what these things are and how you can use them in combination. The more you practice with different data, the better you become at understanding what value you can extract out of the data. Let's get started. First of all, when you open up a data file in Excel, it might look something like this. And I'll show you a few versions. It might look something like this. A uh, couple of rules. First of all, make sure that it is nice and clean, uh, meaning that there are no blank rows or no blank columns. If you had to have a blank column, for example, like this, it's okay as long as there's a fake heading up here somewhere. But try to avoid it if you can. Uh, the other rule is that if you go down to the bottom, try not to touch anything on this row here because if you do it becomes part of the data and whatever answers you get using pivots will obviously be doubled so let's get started we're gonna use this data here and it's quite simple the first thing of course you need to understand is what each column means so if you're working on a day-to-day -day basis with it you would have an appreciation for it or what I like to say is be one with the data so that you are actually living and breathing it so for example in this case it is a global company uh, market would be a country region would be not necessarily a continent but a continental region the risk would be uh, geopolitical risk so the higher the number the more risky it is to do business in that country the net sales for the the market the gross profit for the market the number of staff that we have uh, and the total compensation for those staff so for example in Kenya we do have five staff we're costing us a total of forty thousand dollars now let's get started with some simple pivot tables uh, step one click anywhere inside the data try not to highlight more than one box it won't work just click anywhere click the insert tab at the top and the pivot table button right here on the top left click OK when you get into a pivot table your actual data is still there it did not touch the data so we still have the data 3 tab but it creates a new sheet for you and you're allowed to have as many sheets as possible uh, once you finish answering a set of questions you might want to move on to a new sheet and it's as simple as just going back to your data clicking insert and pivot table chances are you're going to get the information from your pivot zone which is this uh, and type it into a report anyways now the next thing to know is you'll always see a list of all the column headings here and some of these columns are words some are numbers for example market and region are words risk would be a number net sales gross profit staff and compensation are all numbers uh, and pivots will do different things based on if it's a word or a number so for example uh, words you can only see a list of them or you can count them right think about it you can't add words for example uh, numbers it's interesting you could see a list of different numbers you can count how many numbers there are 
you can add the numbers up and you can easily average the numbers and that's basically what pivots are limited to if you want to subtract or divide or multiply you can certainly do it in one of these cells off to the side so let's try something uh, down here you see four boxes and I call them zones. so this is zone one called values zone two called row labels zone three called column labels and zone four called report filter now report filter uh, will show up here on the first row it's rarely used so it's a quite an easy feature to use most often we're going to use the values uh, and the row labels and the column labels or box one two three and four so box two and three are actually the same except box three shows up across the top uh, horizontally and row labels box two shows up vertically on the left hand side so let's try uh, first question I want to know how many different countries I operate in so I will take the market drag and drop it into one of these boxes one two three four now the good thing is you only have four choices so try three different things and stick to the last one right uh, and the only way you will know is by trying and trying so for example if I put market in the values box it's in fact going to count the number of times something appears in market which is 93 now the difficulty here is that if the word Mauritius shows up more than one time it'll count Mauritius twice and we don't know that hopefully it won't but in this case in fact we do have 93 countries there's another way to verify that so let's get rid of market from this box here and to get rid of it you can uncheck this box or just drag and drop it out to here what I call the garbage can right there now let's take the same field market and drop it into box number two and see what happens it'll show you a name of each country and the name will only show up one time so if Brazil actually appeared three times on your list it will only show up one time but we can make an assumption that Brazil was only gonna show up one time so I'll show you another trick if you want to count something that you see it's right in front of you you can just highlight all the items on the list all the way to the bottom not including grand total and you'll see a number right down here 93 so your answer is in fact there are 93 countries now let's find out how many uh, let's do net sales what is a net sales for each country so if I take net sales and put it in box 2 it's actually gonna show me the net sales for each country but that does not lo really look that good so what we're gonna do is take net sales from box 2 and pivot it so this is what pivot means move it over to box 1 and that looks a lot better and you notice that the formatting doesn't come across if, if it bothers you you can always highlight the numbers and format them in the home tab click the dollar button because these are actually dollars there we go so it tells you for each country that these are the actual net sales amounts Now, if you want to see the total number of staff in each country you can take the staff and put it also in box one right now here's the problem it tells you one dollar well these are not dollars so you might want to highlight these and format them for comma comma would be just a number right and zero decimals now it actually looks like there's only one person in Argentina one in Australia and if we take a look scroll down you would think that there will be more in India and China that's not the truth all it's saying is that yes one time uh, staff number shows up next to this country so one of the more difficult things to know in pivots which really isn't that difficult is if you right click on any number and go to value field settings VFS you can actually change that from a count to a sum so in this case we might want to actually sum up the number of employees and it tells you nine in Argentina uh, 150 in Australia and of course you've got 350 in India and and uh, quite a few in China now let's look at the use of box number four uh, what if your boss came and said let's only do the Europe region today well you're gonna have to separate all these countries out you don't know what's in Europe or what's in Asia so we're actually gonna take the region field up here and yes you could put it in box uh, two if you wanted to and we'll split it up that way that's really not a good way to look at it uh, you certainly don't want to put it in box one it's only going to show you a number which is meaningless uh, let's try box number three and yeah that's not bad it's showing you all the countries all the regions across the top uh, that's not bad either maybe a bit too much information but if we take region and put it in box four and the more you practice the more you would know to do that right away look what happens you get this little field popping up up here and it says all this data represents all regions so let's filter this out and this little arrow here is your filter arrow let's click on it and choose let's say only Europe 
And of course, if you wanted to choose more than one, you can click select multiple items and choose one or two different items that you'd like. I'm only going to do Europe though. And when you click OK, all this data represents only countries or markets that are in the European uh, region. So we can say there's 15,122,092 in sales. There's 424 staff in Europe. Now let's do Asia, just as a contrast. Get rid of Europe. Let's do Asia. We have a lot more staff in Asia. And of course, our sales are quite uh, larger as well. Now you could pinpoint down to specific countries also if you wanted to. And as a matter of fact, if you take the country out of here, it'll show you just the totals for that particular region. Now let's go over to some other data so I can show you some more functionality. Uh, in this data we have a few employees, their date of hire, their date of birth, their gender, salary, their age, their department they work in, uh, their productions, their actual rating, so that will be a performance rating, uh, and the number of minutes they spent in meetings. So let's do something interesting. I want to know uh, how many people were hired in the 1990s? So for example, so again, click anywhere inside the data, click insert, pivot table, click OK, and we have date of hire. That's what's important. So I'm going to put date of hire, for example, in box one just to see what it does. And it says 365. That doesn't mean anything to me right now. It just says there are 365 different dates of hire. So I'm going to switch that to box number two. And that's better, it's showing me every single date that I hired somebody on. Now I want to know how many people hired on every date. Now, to know how many people there are, you must have a name or an ID number. That's the only way. So if I take last name, first name, drop it in box number one, that's actually going to count up the number of people hired in each of these dates. And yeah, on you know 17 June 1974, there's only one person hired. If you scroll down, maybe on this date, you get two people that are hired. Now here's the key. Uh, humans, we hate working with dates because there's three parts. So the day, a month, and a year. It's based on 24 hours, 60 seconds, 60 minutes, 365 days a year. But Pivots loves it. Okay, pivots can group this and, and split it apart for you. Uh, quite simple. If you right click on any date, go to group and you'll notice the ungroup feature later on go to group and it's gonna ask you how do you want to group the dates do you want to group them by actual months let's try that one so it tells you how many people were hired in any month of the year but from the beginning of time right so let's not do that let's go back to group let's take out months and let's do years now it's showing you every single year and the number of people hired and we only want 1990s so you have a couple of options here. You can click on this auto filter arrow and uncheck anything that is not in the 1990s. But you have to be very careful with that because sometimes by mistake you uncheck or check something uh, that's not allowed. Uh, what I'm going to do is just highlight all the 1990s. Much easier that way and I could also uh, confirm, maybe make it yellow. And if you highlight these numbers, down here it would tell you total of 137. Now don't confuse that with the count 10, that just means there are 10 years. It's 137 people. Now a follow-up question would be what percentage of my 365 total employees were hired in the 1990s? Well, it's 137, so let's do this on the side here, equal sign, 137 divided by 365. And that would give me an answer 0.38, let's format for percent, answer is 37.53%. Now I want to do an analysis, I want to break it down now by the year you were hired, the number of people, but also the gender because I think in the 90s, 80s, 90s we weren't hiring as many female and in the year 2000 that picked up a lot. So let's have a look. I have a choice. I can put gender in box 2, but again it's really not that nice to look at, the, the, you know, the male, female, each year you have to look at the data differently. What I can do is take date of hire here in box 2 slip it below gender and it gives all the females first then all the males but again your eyes still have to go from year to year for each of the genders so why not take gender and put it in box three now, I'm just gonna start that from the beginning so you can see it from scratch so I have all the years I have the number of people I'm gonna take gender and put it in box three and of course it splits it apart for you females and males and you well there's not really a pattern um, I think maybe pre 1980s there were more males being hired um, although the data doesn't really show that 
Now let's try one more thing. You could put gender in box four and play around with that. So let's look at only the females first. 145 of my employees are females. And then let's look at all the males. And 220 are uh, males. So let's do the math over here. What percentage of your workforce are males? 220 divided by 365. And we know there were 365 employees to begin with. And the answer is 60.27%. So you can have a little bit of fun with dates as well. Now let's do something slightly different. Let's go to data um, data four. Okay, so let's do that one. In this case, we have a bunch of countries. I'm thinking there's UK, USA, but there might be UAE in there somewhere. We don't know. Uh, and there are a bunch of salespeople who are employees. So just to let you know, Buchanan, 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 they count as one guy. Uh, and each line represents one invoice or one sale uh, that a salesperson made and the number of days to close is how efficient the sale was. So the longer the days to close, like these guys here, uh, the worse off the salesperson is. So here's a question. How many salespeople actually work for me? So let's find that out. Let's go to insert, pivot table, OK. And a lot of people would say, let's put salesperson in box one. And they'd report 799. Now you have to question that. That's probably not likely because I have about 799 individual invoices. So you're in fact counting king, king, king as uh, different people. So let's not do that. The rule is if you're trying to count people and you don't see it, you can't count them. You got, you got to be able to see their name. So let's put salesperson in box two. There we go. I can see a person's name. Now I know they work for me. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The answer is nine people. Tells you down here. Now the second question is how many people work in the USA? So I'm going to take country and again I could put it in box two. It'll look something like that or better yet put it in box three. So it splits it across the top. So right away you can confirm there are only two countries. There's UK and USA. If there was any other countries it would actually show up on the list. Now how do you know a guy works in a country? Well let's say if the person has any sales, they must be working in that country. So I actually want to add up all the sales and I'll put that in box one. There we go. Buchanan works in the UK, Dodsworth, King, Suyama, all in the UK. And these five guys work in the USA. So four people work in the UK, five people in the USA. Done. What percentage of my people work in the UK? Well, it's four out of nine. And you can do the math on the side here. Now let's try one more. I'm going to choose data one for this question. The question is, uh, do women, females, get paid more than males? Because we feel that there might be a potential pay equity situation in our company. So let's find out. Click somewhere inside, insert, pivot table. OK, now in the question, you had certain variables. Okay, You had gender and you had salary, two things that you absolutely need to see in order to answer the question. So let's do salary first. I'm going to put, I don't want to see the salaries, okay? I actually want to add them up, so I'm going to put them in box one. And my total payroll, if I just zoom that in, is $22,357,000. And if you like, put dollar signs in it. I want to split that apart by gender. So I'm going to take gender and either put it in box two or box three. They do the same thing. So for example, if you put it in box two, it's male, female vertically. If you put it in box three, it's male, female horizontally. It's up to you. I'm going to put it back in box two. Now on the surface, you might say, well, males make $13 million. Females only make $8 million, almost $9 million. Uh, yeah, males make more money. But that really wasn't the question. The question was, do males make more money than females? So what if there are twice as many males as there are females? Of course, their dollar amount will be higher. So you, in fact, want to do the math. You want to average this out. So let's take a look. I'm going to take last name, first name, put it in box one. And again, I'll just get rid of the dollar signs. And it tells me there are 145 females and 220 males. So if you divide the total salary by the number of people, let's say over here, it will give you the average. Okay. Now I'm just going to do that for fun and then I'll show you another way to do it. We are used to clicking on a cell, for example this, and then dividing by this cell. But what happens in pivots is you get all of this extra garbage. So let's try to avoid that. If you're ever trying to calculate numbers within a pivot area, try to type in the actual cell addresses. So B4 divided by C4, and you will get 61,627. 
and now you can actually copy it down. So females are earning 61600 on average, males only $61,004. So we can almost conclude that there's an insignificant difference between the two because uh, they are in fact averages. Now I'm going to show you a much easier way to do that. Okay, so let's go back. I'm just going to do a fresh pivot. So we've got our gender over here and the total salaries over here. And I'll just zoom it out to make it bigger and again to keep you happy I will put dollar signs in now these are totals we want to average them now Excel already knows how many females are earning eight point nine million dollars so why don't we right click on the number go to value field settings and in fact change it from a sum to account uh, to an average and you can ignore the rest of these it doesn't matter okay and if you're not sure try to just change it anyways from sum to count to average and you have to pick one in this case we do want an average and look it gives me the exact same numbers right so uh, by what percentage are these two off well you can do the math on the side here high number b4 minus the low number b5 divided by the low number b5 high minus low divided by low and of course you know why we use brackets the difference in pay on average between men and women is uh, somewhat insignificant 1.02% now what if we wanted to not see it as a total company but by department because certain departments in our company might uh, pay men more for doing the same type of work than, than women so let's find that out in order to do that let me put gender in box 3 because it's a short list long list should go this way and I'm going to put department in box 2 so now it's splitting the exact same data by department and now I could do a clear comparison. So in a department such as, uh, let's pick one here, uh, such as this one, there's a clear disparity between men and women. Now one last added feature I'd like to show you, it's quite interesting. Uh, humans, we can't really see a whole list of numbers all the time and, and find patterns within it. Sometimes we experience information jade or overload with information. Uh, it would be nice to see this in a graphical format. So the same way we inserted a pivot table, I'm going to click on this little arrow below pivot table. I'm going to choose pivot chart and click OK. Now the space becomes slightly different in that you get this little chart area. And I'm just going to stretch it out, make it as big as I can. Now here's what we'd like to know. Let's do a baby boomer or a demographic, age demographic analysis. I want to put date of birth in box 2 because I actually want to see the dates of birth and I'm going to put the number of people in box one now what happens is on the chart as you can see it's gonna plot out every single the number of people hired in every single date which makes no sense so we're gonna right click on a date we're going to group and let's group it by years um, and that looks a lot better so I think your baby boomers are 1964 and before all of these people here now let's uh, break that down by male and female and I'll put gender in box 3 and of course I think the reds are male the females are blue and if we actually look at the trend in 1964 these are the people and there's a massive hires over here these are the people that are pushing out to retirement and anybody in this zone here we're gonna be caught off guard at the last minute if we don't actually find out that they are gonna retire soon this is the younger generations pushing in and what we do require in order to grow the company and certainly sustain the company is to have highly qualified people pushing in at the younger ages have a great development program so that we can replace the uh, older employees who might actually want to retire earlier so it's a nice little feature to have um, and of course you can play around with the graph you can always right click on one of these bars maybe change the type to a line so you can mix the two around uh, you can actually put titles you can actually go if you click on the design tab up here you can actually put different layouts on the chart you can change the color of various items in the chart um, you can actually add boxes around it if you wanted to you can do all sorts of neat things with the chart okay so have some fun with that let's do one more exercise and I'll wrap up uh, here's some data of some employees we have their age what job they do so mold maker would be a job their marital status their dependent status their coverage status in their class and seniority range and, and their actual service at work I want to know all uh, let's do CNC lead hands who uh, have a marital code of M dependent no coverage F and class E 
Okay, so let's try that. I'm going to go to pivot tables. And first of all, because I only want one occupation, one job, I'll probably put it in box four. I don't actually want it to get in the way. So let's choose that one. I think we said CNC lead hand, right? So anything I see down here will be for CNC lead hand. Now we want marital status, which is M. We want dependent status, which is no. We want coverage, which is, let's do S. We want classification or class as H. And I think we said E. There we go. So we've narrowed it down. Now I want to see the number of people. And again, the number of people represents is represented by the employee name. Let's put the employee name under values. And it says nobody. There's absolutely nobody who fits this. Okay. So, and that's okay. The answer is zero. Let's just change the job. Let's go to accounts payable. Nope, nobody. Nope. Let's just do all employees, see what happens. Yeah, there's only one. So there's only one employee in the entire company uh, that has marital M, dependent N, coverage F, and class H. Now remember, this tutorial simply shows you the eight or nine things you need to know to succeed with pivot tables. You really need to start playing around with it, start playing with the four different boxes, see how the data behaves. Does it count it? Does it average it? Does it uh, um, sum it up? Uh, what the four boxes do? Uh, practice lots and you'll become very good at it. Uh, I should remind you that the, your knowledge of pivot tables is a really critical skill. Not too many people have it and it certainly is an excellent thing to put on your resume going forward.